Hi guys, it's Christine and Nick. We have a special unboxing video for you today. We have ordered our very first Boxu. So for those of you who don't know, Boxu is um, one of these subscription boxes. And in here, um, well, apparently it's meant to be authentic Japanese snacks from all across Japan. So yeah, everyone's first box will be like the intro box and thereafter it will be themed based on that month because it's a monthly subscription. So because this is our first box, it will be like the very first box theme as everyone else. And the next month, I think it's probably November's one and then December. We ordered three just to see what it's like. Right, so let's get right into it. Time to open the box. Let's open it this way. Premium Japanese snacks. So, ta-da! Oh, so what you get... Ooh, so this is cool. So it's a little thing from the... Must be the founder of this. And this, I think, is the booklet. Season of Japan. Now, again, this is our first box, so I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I think apparently each box is picked from Japan and it comes with like an explanation book. So this is the book for this one. Seasons of Japan, Boksu Culture Guide. Welcome to Boksu. So it gives you information. Oh, here we go. Um, every box is hand-picked to bring Japan to you. Explore the holiday region fest festivities and one snack at a time. So it comes with a cultural guide like this one where you can learn about each snack and the maker who made them. That's really cool, right? Look at this. Okay, so I think it's so different seasons. And here are each of them. Oh wow, look at that. So all of this are all the snacks inside. So why don't we go through them and see what they are. Ooh. So this is what it looks like. We'll put it on here. So what's the flavor of this? This is, this is the mini red bean, red bean crackers. crackers. Our flavor is sweet. So we'll probably, because there's a lot to get through, so we'll just do it. We'll eat one. See what it tastes like. Mmm, look inside. I didn't think there would be anything inside, but oh, it's a really thin layer. It's got milk bean inside it. Red bean. Red bean. Mmm, fire. It's very kind of like smooth and delicate. It's not mm, as sweet as you think so it would different. be. I was really worried that. The stuff in there would be stuff that we can find at the Japanese supermarket here, but so far I haven't seen that one. If you, can, if you can imagine like a malt cracker or a malt biscuit, mm. it has that same kind of like malt flavor, mm. but it's red bean. So, talks about here. Its flavor is inspired by shiruko, a traditional Japanese dessert of sweet red bean porridge. The next one in the pack, there's two of them, it's called the Edamame Senbai, um, made with Summer harvested edamame bits baked into the cracker. Senbai is sprinkled with kanako, roast soybean powder, and has a, del has a deliciousness nutty crunch. Okay, so this is another kind of savory one, and it looks like that. It came with two packs. Mm. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I'll put one away. That's interesting, it's like a cracker. Mm. Mmm, it's so nice. What does it taste like? It's um, those Taiwanese crackers where they come with two pieces. It tastes exactly like the Taiwanese one, but it's more spicy. You can taste like it's and, a little and, bit of like... And, okay, the Taiwanese snack is called Wong Wong, but I don't know what it is in, in English. Well, this is this is exactly the same flavor, mm, but really there's more... Nice. There's, it almost tastes like there's more like a soy sauce in the mm. background, and then like the wasa oh, a little tiny bit of wasabi. It's like slightly... Do you like that one? I don't know if you can oh, really, really see, nice. see the green. It's, and it's got quite a lot of powder on it because it's actually quite strong. We've got two white strawberry. And on the book, this is what's called a Boksu, Boksu exclusive. So why is it called Boksu exclusive? It's probably something this, designed for them. This is the world's first chocolate-infused strawberries. Strawberries are harvested, freeze-dried, infused white chocolate and cooled for chocolate with all the flavors of a fresh strawberry. That is so interesting. 
So, let's open one up. It's... Wait. It's freeze-dried. It's a strawberry. Yeah, it's freeze-dried. Should, mm. we, should we try it? Do you want to try and cut this one in half? Yeah, or let's do, you want do that. Bite? We'll grab a knife. Here we go. That was an interesting cut. <laughs> <laughs> Had to cut this what the inside looks like. Wow, so it's totally freeze dried. Freeze dried infused with white chocolate. Oh, it's very heavy. Mmm. It oh. literally just tastes like chocolate. That's so nice. That's really interesting. Mmm. Mmm. I like it. Like it, it almost tastes. Um, it's hard to describe. Yeah. Let's try to get that in focus. <laughs> Doesn't seem to want to. <laughs> it's too small and too delicate. But um, it's almost like it's almost like it tastes more like white chocolate that's with strawberry. very, very, very small amount oh, of strawberry. Oh, that's really nice. That's really nice. And like you can taste the strawberry in the background. This one is the Black Sesame Taiko Kumamon design. Kumamon is this black beer. Um, what is it? Each of these CD drums are handmade. In Kumamoto, hometown of Kumamon. Oh, so it's the hometown of this creator character in Japan. Roasting almonds and sesame seeds, mixing them with hand with Mizuame sugar syrup over heat. You then press into discs and left to cool into this delicious nutty nutty snack. So it's uh it's meant to be sweet apparently. Well, it's sort of be good to have some scissors here just in case. <laughs> Look at that. So hard to get into. Whoa. Even comes with a free dry pack. Yeah. Very good. Because remember, this comes from Japan. We've also been impressed at how fast this package has arrived. Faster than any other package that I've been waiting for. It's anyway, like it's so, around Christmas time. It's so well. dark you can see into its soul. Okay, perfect. So we'll just have, have this piece. So, it's inside. It's okay. Have a look at that fine cross section. Mm. It's kind of like sesame seeds and like rice. It's not very heavy, obviously. This is really nice. Oh, I like it. I like this one. That's interesting. It tastes like a muesli bar. Mmm. Right. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. It tastes like an actual muesli bar, but like with a sesame flavor. I definitely like that one. It's really, really nice. You could eat that one quite easily. Mm. Mocha dango mochi it comes with three. It's so cute. So Hanami dango is a variety of sticky rice dumplings commonly enjoyed during the spring Hanami flower viewing season. Trio of dango is covered in sugar, colored in traditional pink, white, and green. Look at that. So, which what? color do you? Want? Yeah, I was about to ask. Have they different flavors, or are they just dyes? I think it must be dyes. Just traditional colors. Whoa, this is very sugary. Okay. That doesn't look like a double I've seen before. I will. Should I? I don't even you want to buy the entire one. No, you just have the whole one and I'll have the second one. Oh, it's very sugary. Just eat it first. Mmm. It tastes like mm, the sticky lollies. It's flavor of rice cake. But flavor of rice cake, but texture of one of the sweet, sweet lollies. You know those chewy lollies? It's really hard to describe it. Definitely has that kind of you know, sweet flavour. But after taste, it's very you can taste the dango. It's very smooth. Mm. It feels like it has something added to it though, because it's a lot sweeter than dango usually is. Let's try something slightly heavier. This is a matcha chocolate stick cake. Soft cake uses matcha from Uji, Kyoto, moving to Kyoto, known for its high quality matcha. Pairing earthy matcha with bittersweet chocolate chips gives this cake a rich, subtle, sweet flavour. Oh, I'm super excited to try this thing. Look at that. Let's open it up. It's actually got a cutting area to make it easy for you to cut it while it's in the container. Mmm. Mmm. It's really fluffy. I love Asian cake because it's always really light and fluffy. But I think about the aftertaste. I don't know. Maybe the matcha and the chocolate is fused so much. I can't tell them apart anymore. I can definitely taste the both of them. The chocolate's the chocolate's very strong. Um, and okay. the aftertaste is the matcha. The chocolate like comes in very very strongly, but the matcha just comes in afterwards. 
That's really nice. So this is another rice cracker, savory one. This one, uni rice cracker. These delicious fry crackers pull their lovely umami flavor from uni, the sea urchin. Oh, never had uni. And soy sauce, savory and salty without being overly fishy. And crackers, oblong shape, even looks like actual sea urchins. Oh, okay, I've never had sea urchins. We went to, um, we went to Osaka, a little Osaka, and there was that street mall place and I don't know, I, didn't like, I was a little bit too scared to try it, but I kind of regret it. Next time we go back, we will try it. So there's a few of them in there, I'll just grab them out. So yeah, look at that. Oh, I'm really excited. One down on I'm really excited to try this. Definitely shape, shaped like a sea urchin. Kind of like a brown texture. Mm. Interesting. Good try. Mm. I can smell it. Like it's really, it smells strong. Like, oh, this one is much puffier than the other rice cracker we had earlier. Yeah. Okay, it's not my, not my favorite. It's um, it's just another rice cracker, and I think I've had so many different types of rice crackers. This one doesn't really it, it, taste different. Texture-wise, it reminds me <laughs> we actually have something like this in, in New World. Do you know you can get those rice crackers at the convenience section thing where it's like okay. the bags? Okay, aftertaste. Mm. The, now I'm tasting it. There's an aftertaste. So it smells, it smells like soy sauce. So it's... Okay. Yeah, I don't feel like this. It's quite a strong aftertaste. Definitely, yeah. It's definitely not a normal rice cracker texture. Right. Do you taste the aftertaste? It's got a slight seafood flavour. Right. <laughs> definitely got a seafood flavour. Yeah, you, mm. I think, I don't know if it's, you like it's that. It's interesting. Stick potato. Super mucho plum. So it's one of those ones where, you know, you can get them from the supermarket. Really tiny kind of french fry, thin french fry looking chippies. Um, so it's got here, like an ode to the Japanese plum tree, every bite of these thin crispy potato sticks carries a floral note of plum blossom. Sourness of umeboshi, pickled plum. I think, isn't it one of the um, plum wine that I like to drink? Well, pickled plums are really, really popular. And the earthness of shisho, which is the, the leaves. This is a real one for us, because like, obviously in New Zealand, this flavor is not something that we eat, but in Japan, it's, you can get it everywhere. There's like all sorts of stuff in Japan, which is not using this flavor. Um, I think I'll just pour some out. They just look like this. You know, just yeah. so nothing special with the looks. We use these stuff. Bit of flavor, it's right? the taste. Hmm. Oh, okay. Try something. Hmm. Okay. Tartness. <coughs> That's nice. Normally, these potato chips are super like savory. Like super salty, but this has flavor, right? Oh, that's Apple. interesting. It's very interesting. I like it. And um, you know what it reminds me of? Mm, flour. You can definitely taste that flour after the taste, right? Mm. Mm. Oh, I like this one. Do you know what the actual initial mm. flavor tastes like? What? You know those um, Taiwanese sweets, which are kind of like the red plum, and they're in the little packets, mm. and you chew them and they've got the pip inside them. Mm. It's got that flavour quite strongly, and then it transitions into almost like a floral, like a perfumey kind of flavour afterwards. Mm. But they're definitely, they're crunchy, they're really crunchy, so it's quite interesting. Mm. Okay. They're, you can t you could, they're Moorish. Oh, that, okay, that aftertaste, <laughs> it's, mm. it's, it's so strong, I don't know, I don't know how much I can eat of that aftertaste. <laughs> if you had a whole bag, though. it would be very quite unique, extreme. Very yeah. okay. Time for a sweet one. 20th century pier. Pear fromage biscuit. The delicate biscuit is a luxurious blend of 20th century Asian pear, rich cheese, and a decadent white chocolate. Oh, do you remember when we bought these? Oh, we bought these in Japan when we came back. So at the supermarket, oh, not the supermarket, the airport, <gasps> remember they have those milk oh, crackers? Look at that. It's the milk crackers. Remember the cheese milk crackers? Okay, that's what they look like. Yeah. I'm going to take a bite. These are really good if they're what I think they are. Mm. And it'll be like sweet. I can smell it. So you've obviously got like the cream in the middle. It smells very, very strongly of pear. Mmm. Mmm. Who knew? Pear and cheese. Oh, so well together. Mmm. Sweetness of the pear. That tastes very, very good. Dong Dong Yaki, named after the sound of beating taiko drums throughout the festivals in Japan. Savory senbei, I think it's rice crackers, are fried, marinated in tonkatsu. Tonkatsu ramen? Yeah, tonkatsu ramen, you've heard of it. For flavor, there's tangy, peppery, and a little sweet. Interesting. Okay, this is a very interesting way to describe it. I don't think it would... Oh, now I'm really interested to try it. Does it look like this? 
pour a few out. So these ones look a lot more kind of like puffy. Like are they rice cracker? Way more puffy than the other ones. Like in a lot more seasoning on it. You can see the seasoning. What does it smell mm, like? Okay. It smells like soy sauce. Oh, those are nice. I like them immediately. Mm. Those are cool. They're very, very strong compared to the other ones. Mm. It's like an immediate <laughs> light oh. kick. I think in my mind, rice cracker <laughs> shouldn't be that strong. That's cool. That's my view. Oh. I really like that. I like pizza soy sauce. It's hard to try to give it a shot. It's almost like a little hit. Now onto something sweet. Aomori Apple Caramel Yakoi Sebo. It's a cookie that uses apple exclusively from Aomori Japan, which is the apple prefecture. Additional, the additional sweet apple caramel butter gives the Sebo style cookie a Yakoi, which is means soft and chewy texture. Look at that. Oh. Look at that, it's just... Oh, no, 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 you don't understand. This is so soft, I think it's meant to be broken easily. So, it's like that. It's already broken. Okay, so it's quite interesting because you've got like a, almost a dark center. It's obviously very sugary. You see, if you look at like the way... It looks like, like the I mean, cookies you There's a lot of sugar. It looks really soft. Yep, yeah, you can hear the white breaks. Mm. This... Okay. I don't know if you call this a cookie. It's soft, very it's definitely soft. Definitely really soft. It smells like chocolate. Is oh, it? apple. Okay. There's a, there's a very, there's like a chocolate apple flavor. You can taste the apple. It smells of apple and chocolate. Oh, you mean the caramel? Mm. Wow, that is really bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. That was unexpected. Very different. What did you think it was? I think that's the caramel. Mm, mm. There's not really like a biscuity flavor. It's almost more like a like a pie. Yeah. But the flavor is really, really good. That's really nice. It's unique. I could easily eat that one. Seaweed tempura setochi sudachi. I'm trying to get like a sweet savory, sweet savory to take turns so that, you know, things the palate in some way. And there's a lot of sweet and savory, so it's good for us to be able to match it. So these addictive seaweed sheets are battered, fried, and flavored with native sudachi citrus to create a crispy and tangy snack that will leave your taste bud tingling. So this is the savory one. Um, interesting to see what this is. So this looks like... Oh, okay. This is not the shape I was expecting. That's cool. <laughs> they've kind of put like... It's like fish skin, eh? Yeah. It's almost like, like fish skin. It's like they've gone and taken... Obviously, um, seaweed, and put batter on it, and then they've deep fried the batter. Okay, I really no, I have no idea what to expect. Most of those I can try and guess. This. Oh, it's all different. Okay, you taste the seaweed. You taste some sort of. You know what it tastes like? Mm. It's like when we go to Masu, you have that crispy calamari. Mm. I got that. Taste, right? It's the cool thing is it's almost oh. you know what it is? Um salt and vinegar. Mm. It tastes like salt and vinegar chips. Mm. It's got oh, that kind of like, yeah, it's got a, like a, so hot you have it on. It's yeah. got like a tangy salt and vinegar mm. flavor. Okay. It's my top one of my top ones. It's really crunchy. I yeah. love it here. And it's also like I don't know if you can see it. Mm. See if you look on the left there, it's, it's like so hollow. Nice. This is actually airy, like it's airy. So when, like when, when you bite into it, it crumbles. Citrus, it, yeah, I think they put lemony or something. It tastes like lime. Mm. Oh, that's so nice. Fumwari Meijing Mochi Puffs, Kinako. So, Ichigo Seika transforms mochi into a crispy and airy texture of this cloud like confection using a secret proprietary process. The puffs are finished with a dusting of Kinako, which is roasted soybean powder for a wildly addicting sweet nutty flavor. Interesting, sweet and nutty. Look at that, that is. Very, very unique. It's a little puffs. Yeah, this is... This. Hold on. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to watch the again. No, 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 no. It's puffs. In the sweet. It is, uh... Hold on. It's fine. Oh, hold on. Mmm. It's like a meringue. It's like a meringue. It's probably a little... Mmm. Okay, so outside. When they said the powder. Roasted soybean powder. That is really nice. I think the idea is you're probably eating mainly for the flavor of the outside. That's the so bizarre. Of, 
Mm. The inside is airy. It, it effectively has nothing inside it. It's mm. almost like a hollow shell. You eat it for texture, but it's, it's, it's cloud. So you saw it inside, right? It's like cloudy. Salt in the mouth just disappears in the mouth, but what, what you're left with is the outside powder flavor, which is yeah. really nice. Puku Puku Thai chocolate. It's got here. Thai or red snapper are associated with New Year's celebrations, the bar of good fortune. Snack shares their lucky shape, but it's filled with an airy chocolate mousse and two mochi wafers and a nod to a more traditional Japanese sweet. So this is obviously sweet. Um, I like the packaging. I think it's my favorite packaging so far. It looks like some of those like it, it chips. talks about like lucky. Yeah. Ooh, cool! Ooh, it's one of these. No, we have to cut this one now. Okay. Which way? Horizontally. Oh, no, 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 no. It's <laughs> nice oh, and smooth. Oh, no. Nice and smooth. This is this, this will play. Oh. Look at that. Oh, hold on. It's, it's hollow inside. It's interesting. Moves, so it's got like a. It's dried up. <laughs> I wonder if it's meant to just this be like this. Mm. Okay, so it's just like that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's... You know what it tastes like? I know exactly what it tastes like. When you do an ice cream, you say you want a waffle cone with the coated chocolate. It's like that. It's a cone of ice cream, but the cone itself has chocolate coated. Right? Mm. That's what it tastes like. Final uh, edible item is the yuzu sake candy. That's what we thought because it's a candy. It will take a while to choose, so we're going to do this one last. Is it alcoholic? Boksu Maker Series, handmade yuzu sake candy. This candy is handcrafted by the artisans at Daimonji exclusively for Boksu. Wow, and this is Boksu only. Our version blends yuzu juice and Pure with sake for refreshingly citrusy candy. And you said the alcohol content. It's sweet. And yeah, this is a, I'm actually I'm quite interested to try this. It'll be very, 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 very subtle. This means that this is you can't buy you actually can't buy this anywhere because it's made exclusively for a box, right? Okay, so this this <laughs> Oh, they're hard. Oh, they are, they're <laughs> we may hard. need to pause and come back to you once we've tried yeah, it. Just... So I don't know if I can see that. It's kind of. It looks like a rock. It looks like um, sugar candies. I can definitely taste the yuzu, which is the Japanese lemon equivalent. Sake. I don't know. Maybe it is zero point zero point one. So probably a hint in the aftertaste, but. Mainly yuzu. You, you tend to find in sweets if there's like alcohol infused into it. It's easier to try to accentuate the flavor of the other product. Mm. This is a really nice flavor. Like I could easily eat these every single day. This one, discover where your snacks are from. So this actually tells you where, this is quite cool, it's like a little map. All the snacks we've had today, where they came. So the final one is a tea which we haven't had yet, we left it for last. But other than that, look, these are all in Japan and these are the location where they're from. So we, well, we've been to Tokyo, been to Osaka, and been to Kyoto. So yeah, but there's other areas. It's pretty cool, right? So in a way, I really like this. I don't know how you feel, but I, really, I like the fact that I haven't had any of those before, and the fact that you know history on where they're from. And it makes it feel like, I don't know, it feels more special, right? Mm. That they're not just snacks from the supermarket, they're actually fun products. I don't know what tea is like in your country, but like tea packs in New Zealand are not particularly Let me summarize. <clears throat> Ashigara green tea, Aramani Kurufuji. Green tea comes from the Ashigara district of Hakone. When picked, Ashigara tea is also lightly steamed in a process called Asamushi that makes a light colored aromatic tea. Brewing instructions. So you put the bag, tea bag in a 200 ml water, hot water for 40 seconds and then you can taste it. the tea, that's what it looks like, after about 40 seconds-ish. 
Mm. It's um interesting. It's quite powdery. I mean, a little bit oily. No, that's the word, oily. It's the oddest flavor. I don't know how to explain. Like a citrus, and it's good. Right. Like I like it, but it's definitely like a unique experience. Okay, so I think that's a good way to end the video. I'm quite happy we ended on the tea. I think it's very good cleansing. Um, so summary. What do you think? What's your favorite, Nick? Oh, it's awesome. Well, this is a cool experience. <laughs> I would definitely do it again. Mm. Which we will, because we're getting another one. <laughs> Two more! <laughs> um, okay, so here, what have we got here, Nick? So, we decided to have a look to figure out what our two favorite from today were. And Christine decided that her just, favorite ones... This is just so... I really can't describe this and I've never tasted it before, so... Because, you know, Asian snacks, a lot of it are similar and they kind of taste... Shaped differently, branded differently, but they kind of have the same underlying. But this thing, I have never had this anywhere. It's so unique. It's so unique that I, I, I can't say like, and then, it's not cool. This one, I mean, cheese, pear, it's the perfect combination. But also, we've got, as I said, we, we've, we bought not this particular brand, but we bought this kind of cracker when you're in Japan. We bought a whole bunch of them back to New Zealand. And they are some of the coolest things, sure which you can't cheese. find them. There's nothing like it here. Mm. The ones that I've chosen are the white strawberry. And actually, my second follow-up <laughs> is the dango one, because I think that one's really cool. Originally, I was looking at the chocolate cake, but the more I think about the chocolate cake, I think I've had something similar before. Yeah, if you go to a, a, the matcha store, you'll probably eat something similar. But I've had dango quite a bit, and I've never had dango that has like this. Mm, it's know. a blend of Western um, kind of jelly sweet yeah. candy with well, my, dango. <clears throat> my grandmother always had these like little like fruit sweets as a kid which were like kind of candy fruit sweets with sugar all over them and this has exactly the same kind of texture but not with the dango kind of feel but no that's really really cool yeah so hope you guys enjoyed the video let us know in the comment section below whether you enjoy this unboxing whether what you think about boxu because um so far first impression very good so keep it coming <laughs> Um, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and next time we get another box we'll surely do another unboxing video. We will see you next time. Bye bye. bye.